I was very happy to receive an advanced copy of the book The Age of Anomaly and to be able to ask some questions to the author. Your, the goal of your book is to enable readers to prepare better for future financial calamities. How would you specifically give advice to entrepreneurs and small business owners? First of all, thanks a ton for having me on, Philip, and thank you guys for watching. I'm a hands-on economist. Like, aside from just, you know, your bachelor's, master's, PhD, I've also been an entrepreneur myself all my life. So I do try to put a good balance between book smarts and street smarts on the table. And the number one thing I've noticed after keeping in touch with entrepreneurs from so many industries over the years was the fact that many of them tend to live in their micro-bubble. They don't pay attention to what's happening outside their small industry, they don't pay attention to more macro level developments. And of course, you can get away with it most of the time, and that's fine. But there are going to be those few isolated cases in which exogenous shocks that you just never saw coming and that affect everyone, they're going to take their toll on, their, on your business. I've been through it myself. And that's why, of course, I know, I, I know how difficult it is to just keep up on day-to-day -day operations of your business and kind of stay on top of things, which is why I tell people, look, in the proper dose, make it a habit to stay on top of current events, one, and two, something I help people do with my book, have a solid reference point. That's why in my book I focus so much on history, because essentially someone who has a firm grasp on economic history is going to look at a current event, not like he's watching a movie, but instead will say, wait a second, this happened today. And I know that 100 years ago, something similar happened and it led to that. And I know that 200 years ago, once again, something similar happened and it led to that. So maybe I need to be worried about this, but not so much about that. So it's just crazy how much it helps if you have a little bit of historic context. And this this would be my main goal for people because entrepreneurs are driven. They love their business. They, they love their industry. And that's perfect. But if you don't take just a bit of time to look out the window to kind of see the big picture and how that big picture is going to affect your business because it will without a shadow of a doubt but if you just put in that little bit of work those five minutes a day you need to top up to keep up on global events and just generally speaking the news then maybe 30 minutes per month that you spend studying economic history so it, it's in such a small dose it can make a huge difference. It's kind of like I'm selling you amazing fire insurance for just $1. In other words, you can have peace of mind and pay next to nothing because you are wise enough to be preparing now when nobody around you is panicking. If you wait until everyone's afraid, you can have the yeah. smartest economist in the world by your side and there won't be much he can do for you. Let's talk about financial anomalies a little bit and specifically uh, your own situation as an entrepreneur. Uh, what was the financial anomaly that personally hit you the hardest and that you've learned the most from? I think the number one reason why I'm so excited about this book and talking to people from all over the world and spend, why I've spent so much time writing it in the first place was because, yeah, actually the previous uh, global financial crisis, the Great Recession, it affected me quite a bit because I was this young guy from Romania. Ever since high school, I started making money online. I had projects. They were going well. I set money aside and everything seemed to be just perfect. But unfortunately, as of a certain point, despite me being a very financially responsible guy, I still lost everything. And that was because, one, my mom got sick. We don't have an amazing medical system here. So I took her to get treatment abroad. And also, two, this happened exactly when the global financial crisis of 07 to 08 started. So it was kind of like a perfect storm type situation. And needless to say, on the one hand, my entire net worth evaporated because surgery, uh, multiple days of radiation therapy, like 45, I think, multiple rounds of chemo, they took their toll on my finances. So not only did my net worth evaporate, but my business was dramatically affected by the Great Recession as well. Again, a perfect storm type situation. And you know, some people some people are zen about it, and they're like, no, man, you, look at you, you're so strong now, you should be grateful for the opportunity, and in our life, we should be grateful for the bad stuff that happens because it makes us harder. Yeah, let's not, okay? So through my work, and this is why I'm so driven, I want to make it possible for as many people as I can 
to have a better life than the one I had. That's my main driving force. And uh, honestly, there's nothing more I could ask for. So when is the movie of the book coming out? <laughs> well, I, 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 I do love this combination between the YouTube channel and the books I write. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to both mediums, my number one goal is this, explaining to people that there's no running away from economic decisions and that even not making an economic decision is an economic decision that's going to have consequences. <laughs> so what I do, whether it's in writing form or on my channel, is in the proper dose I tell people, look, it's not that difficult to know your basic economics. It's not that difficult to make smart financial choices. So whether it's by trying to be entertaining on YouTube or whether it's by trying to write a book like The Age of Anomaly where it's good, when reading it, it's going to seem like you have a good friend who's talking to you rather than some arrogant economist who thinks he knows everything. So <laughs> through my work, the most important thing I try to do is not lose people, is kind of get the message across that, you know, I'm in it to help as many individuals as possible. And the only thing I care about is results. Way too many economists make it a goal to yeah. sound smart through their work. And they make it such a goal that essentially, yeah, they sound smart. But there's a reason why so few people buy economics books. And out of those who buy them, so few finish them. So, <laughs> so I'm all about what's works, what works. I'm all about loving economics. Make it so that other people understand why I love economics. And then they say, hey, wait a second. These things are actually easy to understand. And not only that, but there's so much value associated with understanding them. So when it comes to my channel, what happens next, my new formats that I'm going to experiment with, they're always going to have the person at their core. Yeah. So I'm always going to be there putting myself out there and doing the things that work so that more and more people become exposed to economists, to economics, fewer and fewer of them say, oh, no, these things are just too difficult. It goes way over my head. I don't care. No, my mission in life is getting as many people to love economics as possible.